Welcome to our review on biological metal extraction. One thing that we need to bear in mind is that not all processes of extracting metals are risk free for the environment. So once we've actually carried out this mining to extract the ores, then quite often mines become abandoned and these abandoned mines can quite often flood and that will lead to the oxidation of metal sulfides to make sulfuric acid. The acid is then able to react with metal ores still present to create these soluble metal compounds and then as that flood water drains from the mine we end up with them being carried into our water systems and I've given you three examples of the impact we can see of this in those photographs below. So we've got the left hand side there which is copper from the Red Bank copper mine in Australia polluting one river. In the middle, we've got the Rio Tinto in Spain, which is polluted with iron from the mine. And then in the bottom right, we've got the Animas River in Colorado, which is from a Gold King mine, which actually contains a variety of compounds, including iron, zinc, cadmium, arsenic, etc. So what we've seen there is a natural occurrence. But what we can actually do is take this principle that occurs in nature and we can actually use it to our advantage. So we can actually use this to form the basis of something called bioleaching. Now in bioleaching, what we're doing is taking bacteria, which are going to oxidize iron two and sulfide ions. They then form sulfuric acid when oxygen and water are present. And that sulfuric acid breaks down the copper sulfide ores in order to release the copper two ions for us. And there are some key advantages to the process of bioleaching. Firstly, we can use low grade ores, which are ones that don't actually contain large quantities of metal and therefore using traditional methods wouldn't end up giving us a profit at the end of it. It's cheaper than traditional mining and processing methods. The bacteria occur naturally and don't need any kind of special treatment to enable them to do this and it doesn't release sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. And sulfur dioxide, remember, is problematic because it can be generating acid rain for us. There are also some disadvantages though, as with any process. First one is it's slow. We're relying on bacteria here. They're not known as the speediest of organisms in the world. And we may also produce some toxic substances, which is also a bit of bad news for the environment. The second process that we can use to extract metals using biological means is the process of phyto extraction. Now, what we actually find is that there are some plants that exist that are very good at absorbing certain metal ions from the soil. And once they've absorbed those metal ions, they will accumulate in their roots, shoots and leaves. So when we've identified these plants, we can then use them in the process of phyto extraction. If we now have a look at the actual process involved in phyto extraction, then we're going to start off with growing our crop on soil that contains a low grade ore or potentially some mine waste. We usually add something called a complexing agent to the soil. And the whole idea behind that is to make it easier for the plants to absorb the metal ions from the soil. Once the plants have grown, then they will contain the metal ions. So we harvest the plants and then we're going to burn them because the ash that we produce actually has a high metal concentration. We can then take the ash and then process it as if it was a high grade ore. The last thing we need to do is consider the advantages and disadvantages of phyto extraction. If we think about our advantages, first of all, it's cheaper than the traditional mining and processing methods. We're generating far less waste because we don't have all of the other bits to dispose of. It's smaller in terms of the energy transfers being involved, and it is actually close to carbon neutral because as the plants grow, they are taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to use in photosynthesis. And then when we burn them, they will release that same amount of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. There are disadvantages, though. We are talking about growing plants. And as you hopefully know, they don't just pop up overnight as a fully grown plant. So it's a slow process. 
and we may well find that in order to actually extract all of the metal from that soil it could take years of planting and harvesting before we've actually got all of the metal from the soil. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now explain the process of bio leaching and discuss its advantages and disadvantages and that you can also explain the process of phyto extraction also talking about the advantages and disadvantages associated with it.